Let's get the Killers panel. James, Jude, Courtney, and Tom Morgal. Give them a round of applause, the Killers panel. Keep it going. Hello. Hey, kids. Hey. Welcome. Good to have you here. I love your glasses, dude. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming out and doing this. Oh, yeah. This time we is yours. It. Whatever you're comfortable with, tell us some stories, hang out, get questions, whatever you're comfortable with. Well, this oh, guy owes me a million for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good one. All right. Now, this guy owes me a million bucks. So this is why we have to keep him working. <laughs> or 10 million. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, how does it feel to be Michael? You know, I, I, I don't think about it because um, I'm not going to think about it until after I do the, the next one, Halloween ends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you do that? I mean, did you, did, I get this question all the time, like, so what does it feel like or what did you think when you got cast? I didn't think about anything. I just got to work. What about you? Oh, yeah. Well, when I started the movie, I had no idea it was going to be anything to have fan, but we had, Jason had been killed and wiped out, and this was a new beginning. And what was it? You know, it, it was a copycat. So this is obviously just a tag to the whole thing that was so cool. And then it kept going and going. <laughs> and then I'd have people say, yeah, but you weren't the real Jason. Well, I had a couple of scenes where I was a flashback. I wore the mask. Oh, uh, but and then pretty soon a year later, you know what? I would like the kills in five. <laughs> that was cool. You chopped the guy's head off. You did, 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 did. Well, yeah, I had a good time. And then pretty soon people started coming around. And I had a few people actually come up, you know what? Five is my favorite. You're smart. You're an incredibly intelligent person. <laughs> <laughs> I've run into intelligent people, too, who happen to think that I'm the <laughs> best Michael Myers. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, just look at that face. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> a face only a mother could love. Oh, huh? God, you know, talking about a face, here I am. <laughs> We're doing the well, photo ops here a couple hours ago, so I'm putting on the mask and the whole thing. He comes in, no, I ain't dressed in a costume. I'm going to be like this. I'm going to... And then he has the gall to say, you know, I put the mask on. You're looking better. <laughs> he was. Look at this guy. <laughs> and it's a nice looking mask, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, boy. Uh, you guys, so um, Halloween Kills is coming out on the 15th. You guys aren't going to go see that, are you? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me tell you, it is brutal with a capital B. So I, I think at some point we need to do a, a, a I mean, after, after kills and after I'm old like, like he is, yeah. um, we'll, we'll do a, a, a Jason meets Michael, but... Um, oh, well, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'll tell you, uh, what do you think about the production value in the movies you're doing compared to what we, we did? I oh, mean, my oh God. Is God, they put this thing together now, don't they? I mean, yeah. we had good stuff. You did, but definitely. But state of the art for then. And we're talking, yeah. you know, what, five years ago? No, ten years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know that this guy, before he was a, a, a stuntman and an actor, he was a fire jumper? What? He was a I fire freaking jumper. Well, I, a smoke jumper. A smoke, smoke jumper is a guy that works for the Forest Service, and our job would be to go out and find mostly remote fires, and you'd get out there in an airplane, and then you'd jump out with a parachute and land on the ground put the, the, the fire out. And... That actually was my introduction to stunt work because when I was doing that back in the, <clears throat> before the 70s. In, in the, uh, in the and, uh, late 90s. And uh, they came out with a TV crew. They said, we want to film an episode of this uh, Wild Kingdom, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I don't know if any of you ever heard of it or saw it, but it, was, it went on for years and years. And they saved the wild buffalo herd from a forest fire with the aid of the smoke jumpers. So I jumped out of an airplane and landed on the ground, and I dug line and set, they got pieces of me in there. Hey, this is pretty good stuff. Maybe I'm going to go to Hollywood, see what I could do. So I did. And you did. <laughs> and I talked to a few guys, and they says, interesting. Why don't you come back next year? We'll talk. So I did. <laughs> and I got started. <laughs> it was meant to be, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy how that goes. It's crazy how that goes. I believe in, I believe in, um, I believe in a, a level of destiny in, 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 um, in life. You never know where it's going to take you. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know if you're going to end up wearing glasses like that, right? I do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, you got any questions, guys? Yeah. Raise your hand. Oh, we got lots. We'll start right here. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm a big fan of both Michael and Jason, but I just want to ask you guys, what was your uh, 
favorite kills to do in your movies? I'll let you go first, brother. You're older. Well, I, you know, I've been asked this a lot, and sometimes I say, well, I like this kill. I like, you know, there, uh, there's different ones uh, to be able to cut a guy's head off or to take a guy, put a fusee in his mouth, or, you know. I, I just have a hard time saying one was the best. I'll tell you what I really enjoyed. That's when I got hit with that tractor. That was a lot of fun. Because <laughs> I got to set it up, and, and I had one of my stuntmen friends who doubled, and he was doubled for, uh, you know, the kid that runs out and jumps in the tractor. And we timed it out, and I set the bucket up with a, with a hand uh, hold, put a two-by-four in there so I have something to hit with my hand, and that would that'd be my off-camera side. So if the camera's over there, I'm like this, and you can't see, I've got something to push off. And I fixed it all up, and man, he came out and hit it so nice because I felt myself in the air, hit the ground, and it was all wet and muddy, and I just slid. <laughs> and when a stuntman feels like, oh, that must have been good, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. That fun is the operative <laughs> word. Louis B. Mayer said, why grow up when you, when you can make movies? And I can tell you this, man. I'm accused of being 10. I think I'm 12. But this guy is younger than I am when it comes to that. We're, we're just kids, man. We're just kids and we get to play. To answer your question, um, so you, you really we're only looking at the first Halloween right here. Um, I, m I have two favorite kills. One is the way I would kill somebody, which is the window scene. I would go in quiet, take care of business, and leave and give her a good whack on the, you know, in the head before I did kill her. But other than that, just, but I have to say the bathroom scene was the most fun because it was, you know, who doesn't want to beat two people up before they kill them? I mean, I do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, those are the, th that's the way that rolls. I think probably as Michael Myers, the most interesting thing for me is to take a double-barreled shotgun and impale a girl into a door. My God, I remember after I had done that, and I kind of forgot what it was, and I got to a convention, and I said, yeah, I used a uh, hunting rifle. And Wait a minute. No, no, that was a double-barrel shotgun. Jeez, that's even harder to believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? All right, got a question right here. All right, hello, Tom and James. Great to have you two with us. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no problem. Um, so this question is for both, both of you. Um, what was your favorite moment and kills to do in both both uh, Friday the 13th and Halloween? And what was it like working with the cast and crew on both Halloween and Friday the 13th? Well, you know, as I said, the, the, the favorite kills for me were the window and the, um, and the bathroom scene. So what I'll give you is this. My favorite scene to shoot was um, the end scene, the, 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 the fire scene. Because as, as Tom will tell you, Fire is incredibly unpredictable and it's incredibly dangerous. And so I was wearing two Nomex suits soaked in fire retardant gel. And you know like when you're sitting in front of a, a campfire and your jeans are getting really, really hot but you don't want to move? That's how hot it was immediately. Boom. My eyes are closed. My mouth is closed. You know, because the flames would have, would have injured me. And then when the, when I, as soon as I felt the, the heat, I knew I was in. I'd open my, I could open my eyes, I was safe there, but I had to breathe like this. <laughs> because otherwise I'd have just burned the epithelial lining of my mouth, throat, lungs. So we did, we did two takes on that, and what you wait for is a bite. And the flame is gonna, the, the heat is gonna bite you. And the first time it happened to my thigh, the second time it happened to my neck. As soon as you feel that bite, you've got seven to 10 seconds to get out or you're gonna start burning. And so, but you've gotta move slow because if you move fast, you're gonna, you're gonna fan, the, fan the heat and it's gonna get hotter. So that was hands down my favorite scene to shoot. I have to say this, I've worked with Francis Ford Coppola and Ron Howard and you know, a, a list of really wonderful directors. Hands down the best director I've ever worked with is David Gordon Green. He leaves his ego, he checks his ego at the door, he doesn't care where the creativity comes from, he solicits and elicits it from everybody on the set if you got an idea, he's willing to listen. If you're a knucklehead, he'll never listen again. But there's actually one scene I shot in Halloween Kills where I had an idea, and this really surprised me. We're in there, we're ready to go, and he goes, okay, shape, your idea, take it away. I was like, dude, I'm directing the frickin' film now? <laughs> Do I get your paycheck? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the cast and crew, and 
And as Tom will tell you, when you're on a movie set, generally this is the case anyhow, but when you're on a movie that everybody wants to be there, where everybody has wanted to work on this particular picture, and they want to work with the people they're working with, I mean, y'all don't know, like in a movie set, six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock at night, it doesn't matter. It's good morning. You, you step on the set, good morning, good morning, good morning. So if, if the director wants to see Tom or myself, and we're in the dressing room, David Gordon Green will say to the production assistant, please invite James Courtney, or please invite Jimmy to the set. I get a knock on the door, it says, David's inviting you to the set. You know, then we say, oh, right. They get to the set, that's welcome to the set. Everybody is going out of their way to be courteous because long, long hours, long, long days, we're exhausted. Courtesy takes it out of the realm of being, you know, a, a, a tense situation into the realm of like we're doing what we love and we're lucky to be here. Take it away, Tom. Yeah, well, that's very true. And we've all had the experience when it's the other way around and the director is not really with it and it doesn't feel right and he's forcing you this or that and pretty soon you have to speak up. So, we, you know, you've had both. But when, when we're doing, uh, it's more you. When you're doing the iconic film with the iconic character, it's already there. When I was doing I was number five. So we didn't have that feeling like we're, we're making a classic except everybody liked it, we got along well, I liked the cast, everybody who was doing their part was working hard, and uh, you know, uh, I had a variety of kills, so it wasn't like I had one outstanding thing, like I said before, but everybody worked well together. I was working for Dick Warlock, who did The Shape on two, and he was the stunt coordinator. He's the one who called me in to do the movie, and we had a lot of fun together. I mean, we had some kidding and carrying on to do, but uh, uh, it was serious because everybody's trying to make that piece of film look right. But like you say, you, you get a, a kind of camaraderie, almost like a family feeling. Yeah, it's definitely a family. We, 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 uh, and and for, for me, going back and shooting Halloween Kills, everybody came back. I mean, almost everybody came back. Uh, the, there were a couple of people who couldn't make it back for that one reason or another. Um, but people actually left jobs halfway through them to come back to work in the film because we felt such a close family relationship. I have a question. You guys obviously really enjoy what you're doing. Are you smiling behind the masks at any time? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm just curious. Actually, I don't. Um, I, I, um, I've, done, I've done a lot of deep psychological emotional work I've done okay. I've worked with shaman in South America and done plant know. medicine in the in the jungles I've worked with Native American shaman mm -hmm. um, so what I do is um, I breathe into the space so it's beyond it's beyond 3d it's beyond time and space and judgment um, into a place where it just is so it's it's in fact David Green said this to me in the um, when we were shooting 2018 he said he had worked with an, another guy he said the only other guy he'd ever worked with that has gone as deep as I was going on 2018 ended up in a psych ward for two months. He couldn't, he had a psychotic break. But I've had so much practice um, with various disciplines that um, what I do is I breathe into the character when I have the mask on. I breathe in and when I'm there, unless David and I need to talk or the stunt coordinator and I need to have a, or, or the camera operator needs me an inch over or an inch back or whatever, I, don't, I step off to the side, I don't speak to anybody, I stay in that space, and then when I hear check the gate, which means we're gonna change, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go to a, a new setup, um, then I know I'm free, then I take a deep breath in, and I breathe that character out, and then I'm me again. Then I'm, you know, same old dickhead everybody knows. <laughs> uh, I, I have to agree. Uh, what you said about did you ever smile or laugh because there was a situation that made me laugh. But in the most, it, I, it's funny, if I put a hat on, I can be that character. And I've been places where you put on a cowboy hat. Well, okay, partner. And, <laughs> and you know, baseball cap or different things. And a stuntman, I think, is trained to double the actor. So you're looking at the way he works, the way he acts, and you, you put that persona on when you're ready to do your part. And just like you're saying, if it's right here and you're going to do this and you're going to do that, what, uh, what about this over here? Then you can fall out for a minute and say, yes, I would, I would go here first, that, can that go out of the way? Okay, fine. And then you're back into it. But the time I did laugh, 
it was because we were doing the scene from the window where they're looking down and here's the Jason flashback with the mask of the red on it and Dick Warlock is below the window they're shooting down from and he's sitting there looking at me so he turns around and starts to moon me and I had to stay there and go ah, don't shake don't laugh he just wanted to see what I if he could break me <laughs> so I did have that kids but you're right you do take it on you can't help it because that's what you do and we've all had experience I haven't done all the practicing things you have but every as as long as I have been doubling somebody I, I watch what they do one of the first movies I did was Star Trek the motion picture I doubled for Leonard Nimoy I was Spock so you don't think I got into that you know yeah that's cool man is that, is that a cool job, doubling London New or what? Right? Yeah, now, you'll, you. s you'll see in, um, uh, in Halloween, there's very few times that I've ever had the mask on and broken character. Um, and in the Blu-ray um, version of Kills, there is a moment that I did. And because, because of the nature of what we do and the sacred nature of what we do, I mean, we were, uh, clearly, we both really respect what it is we do. We respect the characters. We respect you know, the people that we're working with. So they called and asked permission to show that one particular time. And literally, it's, it's one of very, very few times in my entire, you know, playing these characters um, that I've broken character at all. Um, but they asked my permission and I was like, you know, let's, let's, let's fucking do it, man. Like, let, let's, let's, let's let the fans know that we're human as well, that we're having a good time. Yeah, but you want to have it right. I know I have even at times Rarely, but when I, when I didn't like the way the thing went, I said, L listen, let, you, let me do it again. It, it free. I'll just do it. Just let me make it look right, because I can do a better deal than that. And once in a while, that's happened. Very rarely, but I've had just say, let me have a second take, you know? And they say, hey, well, okay. <laughs> and then I feel much better, because I did do better. <laughs> now, I've got to tell you this, because Tom said earlier, when you, when you deal with a, a director who, um, who, who's difficult, um, early on in my career, uh, I met Nick Nolte. And uh, he was a rough and tumble old guy, and, and uh, he said, "Yeah, kid, yeah, so, uh, well, here's what you do. Uh, you know, director, somebody tells you to do something, just look at him, and go, yeah, 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 okay, then do what the fuck you want." <laughs> <laughs> Only Nick Nolte, <laughs> even if you like him, yeah. <laughs> we got some more questions right uh, in front here. I actually have three people, so we're just gonna go here first. Hello, I just want to say I'm a big fan of your guys's, and um, you guys both played iconic killers, you know, you're known everywhere. If there was a killer you could play that you wanted to play, who would it be? Yeah, let me think. That's a really great yeah, question. That's a good question. I mean, uh, oh, is this, is this, is this <laughs> stump the, the Michael, Michael, Jason? <laughs> you know, no, uh, no. Oh, we're fine. Um, I, I think I've thought of doing a new character that would be equal to it. But, you know, I don't want to say, well, I want to take over and do, you know, whatever. Uh, I, they've been done. Uh, I kind of look forward to, you know, maybe there would be a time when I do another one. I don't know, but uh, you'll create something similar, but different, but good. Yeah, yeah. I, um, so sort of a spiritual guide of mine and, 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 and an iconic actor that I um, have always felt close to since I was a child is a guy named Basil Rathbone. Uh, and so Basil Rathbone is, you know, he's, he, it, if I could have a career like Basil Rathbone's, he was, he played so many just gnarly bad dudes. That's just bad people. But he was so good at being bad. And he was close friends with Errol Flynn. And it was said of the two of them, Basil had the easiest job because Basil Rathbone was a really wonderful man who played really bad people, but Errol Flynn was a really bad man who tried to play really good people. So it's easier for us to go from being nice guys to playing these, you know, these cathartic, evil um, representations of you know the dark side of humanity than and, and than it is for a person who's just a dick to not be one. <laughs> Okay, your question. This is for Mr. Morga. Um, 
So I know that whenever A New Beginning first came out, like it wasn't exactly well received because of the whole imposter Jason thing, which I think is kind of stupid considering that the imposter Jason did a lot worse in one film compared to what Jason did throughout the series. But what, when did you start to notice the tide turning for like the cult following of A New Beginning, like all the merchandise that NECA started making and just the, the fan reception? Like when did you start to notice the public opinion changing about part five? Uh, I wasn't involved in uh, convention or anything for a long time. Uh, you know, Roy was the character. And, uh, and so it, what didn't come out, I forget who might have said it, that, well, you know, the guy that says double Roy, he did wear the mask and do all the kills, and that kind of woke up the fan base. And, wow, they wanted to know who I was. And I suppose it was a good 10 years anyway that all of a sudden I'd hear somebody say, yeah, yeah, but I liked Five. Because it was, you know, you weren't really Jason. It was, was obviously the first, you know, the first impression most people had. And they weren't happy with the fact that they didn't get to see the real Jason. But uh, the real Jason's not real. He's a movie. <laughs> so I didn't think it was going to be, you know, necessarily uh, accepted that way. But it did for a while. But I think it was a good 10 years before we'd see a little turn that way. Okay, got a question right here. Yeah, uh, this is for Mr. Courtney. Uh, when I saw the new Halloween, I, I've never seen such a reinvigoration of a franchise. It was absolutely incredible. And not just like the, like you've mentioned, like the heightened brutality, but also the artistic direction. And you mentioned that window scene, I assume you're talking about like, boom, you're in Haddonfield, the one take. Uh, the one take scene where he's, I just wanted to ask about that scene, how many takes, how to, it was like, yeah, I've walked away from the theater just playing that scene over again in my head because I, I ended up timing it. It's like a couple minutes, just that one take scene. And I was wondering if you could talk about that. Oh, thanks, man. That, that, that scene, David and the producers all thought uh, we were going to have to stitch together with CGI because it was such a difficult shot. Because, you know, because we're shooting so much, we couldn't use marks. And so as actors and stuntmen, we use marks. We have marks here. We have, we have points of reference knowing where to stop. We couldn't use marks. But anybody he here who's had, um, you know, I have six younger brothers. And, and, you know, if we play basketball together, um, I don't need to know where my brother Bill is or my brother Joe is. If, if I'm dribbling here, I can know that if I throw the ball behind me, my brother's going to be there. So we played ball. We grew up playing together. So Stewie, the, the, um, the Steadicam operator, um, we rehearsed it for a day so we could get all the blocking down, et cetera, et cetera. But then it gets really, really critical when, you know, moving with that steady cam. I mean, there were so many critical moments. We did nine takes. It took all night. Um, but about the seventh take, uh, we nailed it. Because we, the, the adjustments were literally, okay, Jimmy, when you hit the steps, I need you to be one inch over. And when you get down to the bottom of the steps, I need you more in line here than this. But it's something I couldn't see. And then Stuart is behind me, and then he's, he's going around me. And, you know, and then, um, you know, for instance, when I go up the stairs and I look in the, in, the, in the window and we see the reflection of my face. Then I walk down and there's a shadow at the side of the house. Um, from the moment I see my shadow is gone, I sprint to the back door, sprint in, and I make it in just in time to get my cue to go in and kill her. And so um, it was the seventh take, we nailed it, and David Gordon Green literally ran across the set, and he's, he's half my size, literally ran across the set, and he bear hugged me and practically picked me up, and he goes, dude, we fucking got it. We fucking got it. And of course, then we did eight, and then as Tom will tell you, even when you get it, you haven't got it for sure, so you do it again. And so we nailed seven and nine of those takes. Took all night, and it was so gratifying. It was so, so gratifying. Thank you. We've got time for about two more questions. I got a question over here to your right, way over here. This question's for Freddie. So how was it like wearing all that makeup? Huh? That's, no. Isn't it makeup? No. That's Jason. No. That's Jason. Jason and Michael Myers. Oh. Next question, please. My bad. <laughs> if, you, if you were to play Freddie, how would it be wearing all that makeup? There you go. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I, well, it, interesting to say, Freddie, because I really, really <laughs> super appreciate the work that Robert England did and what he did to create that character. I mean, I think this, what, what, what Robert did is so unique and creative and special 
So I guarantee you that just like Tom and I are talking about right now, Robert went to a place internally that nobody else has ever been before. And that's why he's done it so iconic. And, and, but you know, and it, what Tom was saying earlier about, um, about putting on a cowboy hat or putting on a costume, let me tell you, costumes change things. I did a movie called Far and Away. I was a bare knuckle fighter with uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. And you know, so all we're doing is you know, we were wearing period, mid 1800s clothes. The moment you put that costume on, you become a different person. The costume changes you. The makeup changes you. I, I was on a series called Babylon 5 for a few years, and I played lots of different alien characters. I was a stunt double for Jerry Doyle, who was the human um, security, head of security on Babylon 5. But almost every episode, I would then put on a mask or you know, put on um, you know, various prosthetics and do a fight scene. So I got to be two different, you know, be a stunt double and be a character in, in many of those episodes. And the difference in the same day, um, in doubling Jerry and being what Jerry was, you know, like Tom said, you know, if a good stunt double will study, and reach into his character and become the same person. And then in the same day, put on prosthetics and makeup and become a completely different being, completely different. So it's a really good question. Um, I happen to look better in makeup than he does, but then maybe I need it more. He didn't get good makeup, and so. <laughs> I know, just to add to that, I did Pirates of the Caribbean, and I did four of those movies, and when I put a sword in my hand, I'm a pirate. Yeah, dog, yeah. isn't that fun? Yeah. All right, we got a question right, uh, right down here. This is a question from Mr. Courtney. How was it like holding the buzzsaw in the trailer for Halloween Kills? Holding the what? I'm sorry. Buzzsaw. The buzzsaw. Um, heavy. Heavy. And Halligans are heavy too. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> Want to get one more question in? Okay. Have we got one more? Thank you. Oh, there we go. All, all right. right. Final. I'm final. Heading question. over there. All right. Once again, thank you guys for coming out and doing this. It's so oh, it's great. Oh, this is so much fun. And you, you guys, I, and you know, I got to say this. Um, I've, said, I've said it so many times before. Maybe I've said it to a few of you in, in the line. But um, I have found horror fans to be the, the kindest, gentlest, most beautiful people on the frickin' planet. And, and I have this theory that, that people who are into horror work out their pathos subconsciously by watching horror films. And, and, the, and there's, a, there's a madness to this, uh, there's, there's a method to this madness because there's a friend of mine who's a world famous astrologer who you'll never find. But, you know, uh, he has clients at Goldman Sachs and Sony Pictures and directors and prime ministers and that's why you'll never find him because he's, just, he's under radar. Um, if you recall, um, Ronald Reagan, what, there was an attempt at assassination and Nancy Reagan was big into astrology so what her astrologer told Ronald Reagan to do was immerse himself in, in assassination films. So instead of running away from it, to run into it. And, and my theory is that horror fans immerse themselves in all these things that scare people and make them violent, work it out, so they can afford, you, we, can afford to be nice people. And, and, and I've got to say this, in all the cons that I've done, and the thousands and thousands of people I've met, I have not met one douchebag. Not one. Yeah. All right, we'll let this be the last question. Hi, I was just wondering, how does it feel to be, su like both of you to be such iconic characters with so few words and to still be so amazing, so recognized compared to artists who have like classic quotable lines? Well, I was asked, I have been asked before, what's the scariest stunt you've ever done? And I usually say dialogue. No, and uh, to be able to do this part and not have to worry about dialogue was great because all you had to do is concentrate on this character and what you had to do. And for us as stunt guys, it doesn't get much better. You know, it's, it's, and, and to extrapolate on that, I mean, we have to go to the same place. We go to the exact same place internally. We do, we have the same technical realities, you know, with blocking and camera and I think the benefit we have from being stuntmen um, and actors is, um, and then sometimes working with actors, for instance, you know, we have to be really, really aware of our marks, 
of what's dangerous and what's not, keeping in, in frame with the camera so we know what lens these guys are using and we know the parameters of those lenses. Oftentimes, and Tom, I'm sure will agree with me, we're doing a fight or a kill with just an actor who's not a stunt person and is not used to the really strict parameters of safety and, and staying in frame. And sometimes half the fight is keeping the son of a bitch in frame. You know what I mean? It's like just trying to keep the dude from like going off somewhere and like flailing away. And so, um, so to answer your question, like as much as, you know, Tom said is like, uh, okay, so we don't have to worry about dialogue because oftentimes when you're doing dialogue, you know, you work your butt off for weeks and weeks and weeks and all of a sudden, you know, like you say you have a 6 a.m. call time. Well, sometime around 3 in the morning, someone's going to slip up, you know, sides for you, your, your lines for the next day and they're gonna completely change the scene. You've memorized the scene, now they've changed it. So you're gonna wake up at five, you gotta be there at six, but you gotta memorize a whole new scene with changed lines and everything. So that's one technical aspect, so, but it's a trade-off because the technical reality of us being able to stay in frames, hit our marks, keep people safe, which is super, super important, um, it's just another tool in the box. And frankly, I mean, you know, like, Tom is very humble, and, and, but the truth is there's a reason why he does what he does because he's good at all of those things. You know what I mean? It's, it's fun. It's fun. Um, so, you know, for us to play characters that, that don't speak, we're still going to the same place. We're still, we still have all these technical aspects that we have to deal with. In fact, I would submit that um, it's easier with dialogue because you can you can kind of lie you can cheat you can cheat your way through it sometimes if you're not speaking man you can't cheat the audience will know the audience will know if you're not there they'll know if you're faking it if they're faking it y'all wouldn't be here talking to us you'd be throwing rocks at us i just want to say one thing that <clears throat> um, it's obvious to us and the fans don't realize it too much but i mean we tell you but uh I'm a guy who's got a job that goes on the set and does a show. A show. And when I did uh, Friday the 13th, I had no idea it was going to be anything important. It was going to have fan following. And the only reason I'm sitting here and not you is because I did that thing. But what made it me be the guy that everybody was interested in for that particular movie is you. You're the ones who liked it. And you're the ones that the fans of it, and you're the ones who want to talk to us, you're the ones that make it for us. So all we can do is thank you for liking what we did. And we appreciate that 100%. Agreed, uh, 100%. And, and you know, and, and, and this is where I feel so blessed in my life, and I know Tom does too, and, 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 and really most of us do, all of us should, um, is no matter what we do, whether, you know, whether you're, you're uh, uh, spraying a car in a, in a paint booth or, or, or fixing someone's plumbing or driving or, you know I mean the million things we can do we're so blessed to to do something well enough that somebody else likes it you know what I mean like it, 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 we love what we do anyhow we do it no matter what if you guys hated us we do it somewhere and never be seen but the fact is we do something well enough that you guys appreciate it which, may, you know, which creates a kindred bond between y'all and us mm -hmm. And that's, and that's special. It really is. And, and, and Tom and I both really appreciate you for that. Well, yeah. well, all I can say is you guys killed it. Fabulous Q&A. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Round of applause. James Ruth Courtney, Tom Morga. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun and follow your fandom.